Hey, happy October, everybody. Um, this is possibly the shortest video I've ever done on this channel. It's just going to be a couple of minutes with some amazing news. So if you follow the ZBrush Summit channel, um, so that's Maxon's um, uh, yearly event that used to be called the ZBrush, just the ZBrush Summit or Pixelogic ZBrush Summit, um, they've now announced that we are finally getting uh, ZBrush for the iPad. So massive news. I don't have a lot of information, obviously, because they didn't put much out, but let's just have a little chat about that and then we can really dive into that in the comments. So it's ZBrush Summit time and they've, they're about three or four days in and they've announced now that we are going to get ZBrush for the iPad, which is huge for people like me who are, uh, uh, you know, I'm a long time ZBrush user. So I'm 23 years into using ZBrush now, started in 99 when they released it. Um, and and basically, I also use uh, things like Nomad Sculpt on the iPad, as you know from this channel, and things like Forger, which used to be the the, the main solution. But Maxon went ahead and purchased Pixelogic uh, a couple of years ago, and this is one of the biggest announcements they've made for people like me. Um, so it, it it means that we're going to get the industry standard uh, sculpting tool right there alongside Nomad. So. Uh, let's just have a think about let's have a talk about the history first of all and then we'll have a quick think about the implications for us as creators so the first thing you probably need to know is just a little tiny bit of history so uh, Pixelogic was started in the 90s by Offair, Allen and a chap called Jack who funded it a little bit they started in downtown LA in a warehouse and uh, they, they developed a tool that became what you know as ZBrush. It was a digital sculpting tool. And back in the 90s, nobody really could handle the data that was coming out of it. It didn't have things like um, Z-Spheres. It didn't have even any kind of sub tools. It was just literally mushing around clay. There was a couple of other tools around at the time, one called Amorphium. Um, and Maya had an, uh, I think it was Maya Artisan where you could, you could, you could basically manipulate surfaces, but there was nothing like it. Now, fast forward into the 2000s, uh, after Lord of the Rings, it becomes such a popular tool. Fast forward even further and it just becomes the de facto. And alongside it now, obviously, Blender got sculpting, uh, Modo got sculpting, um, uh, which then went into Maya. And almost every major package decided to do some form of sculpting and programs like 3D Coat were developed, um, which is, uh, you know, it's got voxel sculpting, which obviously you probably will be aware has gone into VR now as well. And then, then realistically, it, you know, everything stayed fairly stable. So, the, the, you know, the big, big complaint that most people have is about the ZBrush interface and the non-standard interface and how it doesn't follow industry norms. But it came from such a different background. It came from what's called a two and a half D background. And they developed this thing called a Pixol, P-I-X-O-L, where you've got, um, you, you basically can snap things down on a screen. There's no cameras to move around. It's a single view, no quad view. Lots of things that make it feel really hard. And for someone like me, who's been teaching it corporately and privately, you know, all of that time, it's still hard to teach. It's easy for me to teach because I know how to use it, but I still have to think of new and innovative ways to help people learn and get over that first few days. And the big problem, massive problem for us is for or people like me is that people forget how to use it. So if you learn ZBrush and you go away for a couple of weeks and you don't use it, coming back is so difficult. That you know that 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 becomes such a hard thing for for, for people to do. If you're not using it all the time, it, it, it's hard. And then about 10 years ago, um, uh, something called Forger came along on the iPad. The iPad was well established by then, by the, the, the early 2012s, 20, uh, 2013, that, that kind of time. And uh, a, a young chap called Javier um, uh, developed um, a, a sculpting tool right there on the iPad, which became Forger. Um, and we all loved it. It was all, you know, it's a fantastic tool, still is a fantastic tool. And then it was hoovered up by Maxon. Um, and at that time, I started using Nomad Sculpt before it was released with the developer Stefan. And as you know, if you follow this channel, that's become, you know, my, my, my default mobile sculpting tool is, is obviously Nomad, which, you know, hopefully a lot of you are already using that. And for a one-off payment of under $20, we get an incredible a tool for you know it's the de facto way to get into digital sculpting i believe so i'm not i'm you know i, I am a blender user 
but I don't teach Blender and I find that there's so much in there that it's not as simple as just diving in and, and you know, you know, Blender is your way in, into digital sculpting. Plus, Blender's sculpting tools are nowhere near what ZBrush or even Nomad has got now. So it's much, much easier to have a 30 million polygon model on your iPad than it is in uh, Blender, which I find mind blowing. So people will disagree with me on that. And, you know, I, I don't really have an argument for it. That's just my opinion. So I am hoping beyond hope that Blender get a new rewrite soon for um sculpting and if we get a release like like, like we got back um the 2.8 release of blender where all of the tools change and even the, the click change from left to right everything changed in, in 2.8 if we get that for the sculpting in blender then it'll be another rocket into the into the backside of the industry so and i want that as 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 much as the next man so i i, I really would like that to, to happen so ZBrush is owned by Maxon. Uh, Maxon owns Cinema 4D, and, and Cinema 4D. You know, a lot of people won't know this, but in my company, that's the main tool. I I use Cinema 4D for all of my contract work because a lot of my clients use Cinema 4D. So that's the modeling tool of choice for polygonal modeling and motion graphics for us. Uh, I also use Maya, and I still use a program called Silo for po polygon modeling, um, which is quite an old-fashioned tool, but I absolutely adore it. But if Maxon, Maxon Suite, now Maxon One, behind the licensing wall, the same as Adobe, has got now Cinema 4D, it's got ZBrush, it's got Forger, it's got Red uh, Red Giant, it's got Red Shift, the renderer which we use. It's got an amazing set of tools uh, in that package there. Um, and if they now add ZBrush to iPad, then it causes a bit of conflict. So what happens to uh, Nomad? Um, you know, do, does Nomad get really, really hit and do a lot of people switch? I doubt it very much. What happens to Forger, their own product? Do they continue developing Forger in the way that they're doing? Because they would have two mobile sculpting tools, which obviously, as we know, that's not going to go forward. And, you know, that, that, that kind of scenario doesn't last. No company has two tools um, for any significant length of time without, without it causing problems. So what I would like is ZBrush onto the iPad and not a ZBrush Core Mini or anything like that, where it's a cut down version of Sculptress Pro and you know, or, 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 or some other really, really underrated you know, set of tools. What I want is a, a possibly limited, but I'd like ZBrush on the iPad with the core tools. So I'd like the sub tools. I'd like to be able to use um, my Z remesher, my Z spheres, which probably might be a bit of an ask in the first port. Um, I just like the core. I don't need a hundred brushes. I just need ten or fifteen of the core brushes to be able to work effectively. And then I'd like to make sure they work out a system where obviously you're not going to have the the Alt Control Shift and all of that that you get when you're using ZBrush uh, on a PC or a Mac. Um, there's going to have to be some compromises, you know. We're going to we're going to have to see something that compromises it a little bit, uh, but that would be amazing. It, you know, it it will be a direct competitor to Nomad Sculpt, and I don't mind that. You know, you know, Stefan's a sole developer on his own. He's holding his own really, really well, and I just think it would make everything better. You know, it it, it will it, it will competition is the thing we need in this marketplace, um, and also a lot of people just won't go over because it will be a it will be a licensed product. Is, you know, it's definitely going to have a fee attached to it every month. Um, so some people simply will not possibly go to it just for that reason. But imagine if we get the tech tools, imagine if we get UV master, imagine if we get Z remesher, if we get, you know, the ability to do some of the Z model um, polygon modeling tools, it could be phenomenal. So with that said, I am going to ask you a couple of questions and I want you to answer them in the comments. So first of all, what does it mean to you? Are you, you know, are you a, um, a new user and you don't really care? Uh, are you a veteran of ZBrush and you're quite looking forward to it? So what does it mean to you? And then also, what would you want from it? What tools do you want Maxon to put into ZBrush on the iPad that would make it the tool of choice for you? So drop them down in the comments and let, let's get some uh, back and forth going and we'll get some people to to start, you know, um, throwing in some of their opinions. Um, some of my friends in the industry, I'll ask them to join in on the conversation. So, yeah, stick it down in the comments down below and let's wait and see. Let's see what 2024 brings us. Let's hope that it is the tool of choice for us all. And let's hope that um, it shakes up the industry where we get things moving and we, we really have some... Um, 
you know, it really makes things happen and, and we start getting new tools that we really, really want. So have a great week, everybody. If you like this kind of video, then please give it a, a thumbs up as always. Um, and if you like it enough to give it a thumbs up, then please subscribe to the channel. We're doing a lot more now, including clay sculpting and a lot more things where I'm trying to stick to my core mantra, which is helping you create in new and innovative ways. Have a great week.